And God gonna be like, I, I wish I knew you. You know what I'm saying? I wish I knew you because in your heart, you didn't respond. You didn't. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. And, and I, how many of y'all love God's patience? Because he be knowing you're going to, come on, when God try you, he know you're going to act a fool. But what you, the problem is, you praying that God change the other person, God says, I want that fool in you. And a lot of times we're preaching it wrong. We're preaching it like you justify because they tried you. You justify, look at them haters. That's why we say, what we say, wherever there's a hater, there's a, a lover. Anytime there's a hater, it's an opportunity for you to show the love of God. Because that's what Jesus did. He met hate with what? With love. Because remember the Bible says to love those who love you. You're not impressing God. The enemy loved those who love him. God said that's not impressive. And some of us, we hear that and we don't even realize that's your test. And if you're failing that test, you're in trouble. And God is trying to get you out of trouble. Don't settle for an F when God wants an A. And don't you ever think, and neither you or I ever think that God is going to settle for, your, for you and I to have this dislike or these feelings inside of us as contrary. Because God can kind of ask you a question that I don't really want God to ask me or ask you. Do you think you're greater than I am? If they, he said if they hated me, they're going to. Watch it. He didn't say that. He said that because he's trying to tell you, in me, I can give you the right response. Amen? God didn't say you won't be angry, but he said you're bad. He said, but sin not. What does sin mean? Do not hold that in your heart. Amen? Y'all with me? If we get this thing down, when we get this healing the tongue, right? mothers and daughters, fathers and sons, um, Husbands and wives will be able to walk in a, be, in a way of harmony and love. People who are gay are going to be able to understand. No, it ain't about you looking at somebody trying to prove they wrong. God is saying, what is your response? My mom used to say something that was very interesting. She still says something. She said, it takes two fools to have an argument. Because one can say, I'm not going there. You can argue by yourself. Amen? But what's in our heart that we feel like we got to let somebody know what time it is? God said, whatever it is, I want it. We like to sing the song, God will fight your battles if you just be still. And soon we walk out the church. Oh, God, I got this one. Be still. You know, they be, they be getting into it. Be still. God, fight peace. I got this one, God. She should never try me like that. You know, I, 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 God, I know God be like, okay. Okay, go ahead and do what you're going to do. Because when, when you reap what you sow, maybe you'll be ready to get a change. Amen? So we got, we got the first one. Let's go in on chapter 2. We're going to go ahead and read the title of it. Everybody, should open, everyone should be paid, should be open to looking like this. I want you to follow along because guess what? You're gonna, I'm going to be asking you what you got. This is a discipleship class. We're not trying to raise members. Members follow a leader. Disciples are raised up to be leaders. They got to know the word. Amen? Go ahead. Chapter 2, the heart overflows through the mouth. Our theme will be made a little more relevant by an illustration. During World War II, I was, at a hospital, I was a hospital attendant with the British Army in North Africa. At one time, I was appointed the NCO in charge of a small reception station in the desert that catered only to dentistry patients. Each morning, the doctor under whom I worked would summon me and would go out on roads of our patients who were all lying there on stretchers right on the sand. I noticed 
that every morning the doctor always greeted each patient with the same two sentences. The first one was, good morning, how are you? The second was, show me your tongue. It was not long before I realized that the doctor paid very little attention to the answer to his question, how are you? He always moved on immediately to the next question, show me your tongue. When the patient stuck his tongue out, the doctor looked very carefully at it. Then he formed his estimate of the patient's condition much more from looking at his tongue than from the answer the patient actually gave to the question, how are you? That stuck with me. And later, as I moved on into ministry, many times it occurred to me that God does much the same with us as the doctor did with his patients. God may ask us, how are you? And we may give him an estimate of our condition. But I think the next thing that God says metaphoric metaphorically is, show me your tongue. And when God looks at our tongues, then he forms his own estimate of our true spiritual condition. The state of your tongue is a very sure guide to your spiritual condition. Okay, somebody give me some feedback. Do we perceive that to be true or false? Go um, what, what I took from this is, you know, the doctor is in the natural assessing the condition of the tongue, but God wants to assess in the spirit, you know, what's, what the tongue really possess. You know, is it possessing patience, love, um, long-suffering, um, humility, and things of that nature. But sometimes we spew our hate, backbiting. Uh, slander, uh, envy, envious, jealousy, and um, even fear. So, you know, when I see this, I see a two-part. I see a natural doctor assessing the condition from the natural, and God assesses our condition from the spirit based upon the things that we spew out our mouth by using the tongue. Everybody agree? Go ahead. Um, what I was seeing was um, from the natural to the spiritual, just what the, uh, the guy was saying when he would ask a question, he wasn't, really, it wasn't, he wasn't really looking for what the person said. He was looking for basically the action in the sense of like, what, like and if you connect, connect it to the spiritual, like when God asks a question, he'll say, you know, you know, um, do this or how are you or do you love me this or that whatever the case may be but he looks for the action in the sense of in the spiritual when he says you know do you love me but if you say yeah i do and you're not doing the action he he's ready he's ready to see the action so you could actually see if you you know if you really love him and connecting it to like the phys uh, the physical when he was saying you know um how are you the guy would they'll say i'm good or i'm not good regardless if they said that i'm good or I'm not good he looked at the tongue so in a sense of saying what, where it's like what well, God would, um, will ask us questions and say, you know, um, and you say like you're not bitter or I'm not angry or at this person, whatever the case may be. But the way you speak towards that person, the way you speak about that person is the action of, of, of how you truly feel inside your heart and, and the action of where you are in, um, in the state towards that person. So, well, uh, Some of us also say that you perceive that God is going to go a little deeper. When the doctor act, asked how he was doing, that's external. How you feel, he wants something. But the doctor says, open your mouth, you're going a little deeper. It reminds me of the scripture where he says, that the Bible says, try the spirit. That word try means to test, to examine. A lot of us as young men and women, if we, uh, uh, as young men and women, if it, when it came to relationships, if you understood this concept, you would learn to go deeper than somebody's initial words or their conversation. And you'll be learning to go deeper to the, to the way he open, oh, when he says, open the tongue, let me see what's, what's really guiding inside of your heart. Let me see the condition of your heart. Because a lot of, I mean, because in the world, words, you know, it's all about them sweet words, you know, enticing words. But I thank God that God, God goes deeper. Amen? And we need, to, for, let me tell you something, for proper prayer, you need to go deeper. For a pop or let me, I just want to give you this one illustration, and I'm, I want um, you, know, you to speak. In this proper illustration, um, 
How many of y'all remember that, um, what was it, Hannah? I'm trying to remember her name. Um, she, um, she didn't have any children. And she, Hannah, she was in a church praying. And Eli, Eli gathered uh, a perspective from what he saw. And he began to gather an idea about Hannah from what he saw. But how many know his idea was all wrong? Presumption. And sometimes we do that with one another. We assume. I've done it. I'm just going to be honest. I've done it too. Where you think that, and I'm going to tell you something. That's why you have to watch out for people who, um, and, and y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all been in ministry long enough to know people when they move into prophetic too. People that move into prophetic, you ever notice that when they see somebody start re responding to what they're saying, they start getting hyped up. That's, that's emotional generation. That's, that's emo they're being emotionally stimulated. They're not being spiritually moved. Because number one, oh, they, they ask you a question. They start asking, see, when God begins to deal with you unprophetically, he ain't asking you nothing. He's telling you. That's, how, that's why you know God is present. But you know, and I'm just saying it because I've seen it that, you know, people like, and then you see them, they, oh, man, then they just go in, and then you be like, two weeks later, you be like, what that brother said didn't come to pass. Why? They was in their emotions. That's why they were like, people love to see, or people start crying, and they start going in, wait a minute, hold up, hold up. Uh, number one, when I'm if God is prophetic speaking, the truth is, I don't, it's not about your emotions. Did you understand what he had to say to you at that moment? God don't want to see you shaking, falling on the floor while he's talking to you. That's rude. Could you imagine you talking to somebody? Stand up, Mike. You start talking to me. Start talking to me. Start talking to me. <laughs> you falling out. Man, you're going to be like, what's wrong? With Mike going to be like, is there something wrong with you? God ain't with that crazy. You, you fall down on the floor and then pick him up, wake him up, and say, now hear what God has to say to you because that word you're going to need to go through that valley. Let's get out of that foolishness. Number one, to be falling out on God, even when God has to speak, watch this. It's, don't get me wrong, somebody can fall out in the presence of God, but you know what they did in the angels when they fell down and get worship? He picked them up and said, let me speak to you. Because he wants, because God does not, when God speaks his words are powerful and he wants you to hear the words. Why? Because the words are the things you're going to have to fight with when them storms come. You know what I'm saying? That person on the floor passed out, can't hear what God's saying. And then when a the storm come, you wonder why they don't ran out and got their head cut off. Why? Because God was telling them, when God was talking to them, they couldn't hear it. Come on, we got we to gotta understand. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Okay, go ahead. Like how you were saying, like with a natural doctor, he asked you that's the first question, like when you go to get seen in the emergency room, he's like, um, how are you? And now she'd be like, well, you know, I feel like this. But then when they examine you in the inside, that's what God wants to see. Like Amen. a lot of people are saying it's like a, a, a religious cliche. Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. But God is like, let me see your tongue. Let me see if you're blessed and cursing your brother or sister or slandering your brother or sister or covering your brother and sister in prayer. So that's kind of like, you know, me was at work. I think it was yesterday and Terry kind of corrected me. And it was like, I didn't want to receive it at the time because I was angry. And she was like, sis, we got to be the light. And I was like, I didn't want to hear it. But it's like, it's amazing how God will have you to sit so you can hear it. And, and I, I, how many of y'all like her illustration? I kind of like, I mean, everybody says something, but I, I love her illustration because the truth is, come on, we do, come on. Bless you. With the same time we blessing somebody, the other time we slandering somebody else. God said, you sick. I, and you know what I mean? He's saying your heart is sick. Because, and you need to go get well. That's why, how many of y'all know this? That's why the Bible says this. Confess your sins one to another and be healed. Confess your sins one to another and be healed. He said, get it out your system. Don't be going in church acting like you all right. And you know you're not all right. Giving them fake church hugs. Loving on somebody on the other side of the room and ain't got nothing to say to the other one. Come on, God say, No. Are you with y'all understand where we're going? I, I want us to make I, I, I'm a, I, I want us to get I want us to get this point here because we all been there. I'm gonna tell you something. You've been walking with God, you've been there. You've been there. And God to, tonight, He's like tearing our little butt up saying, get He's not condemning you. He's saying, okay, stop it. Because some of us, the truth is, you'll be in here. I'm gonna tell you something. Let me say this. I say it to myself, and y'all can just hear me say it to myself. God ain't down with that. What makes you think he's going to overlook that? What makes you think God's going to overlook you with your cliques? 
you down with these group of girls over here, but these over the girls, you saying that? No, God ain't gonna be down with that. And I don't care how much you sing. I don't care. If, I, don't, I don't care how pretty your voice is. When you start singing, God put earphones. He said, "Please be quiet. Please." Until you go get your sister thing right, I don't want to hear nothing out of your mouth. Because why? He knows when you are singing, it's to cover up the bitterness inside of you. And God says, "I love you enough that you can be real." Don't y'all love God? God says, I love you. He said, I already know. Just be real with me. God, what, what is being real? God, I'm having a problem with loving this sister right here. I need your help. Amen? Amen. But to act like you ain't having no problem, I've been, I'm, I'm telling you, I've been there. Be, in church, be like, <laughs> we cool. And soon somebody say their name when you ain't in church. Yeah, girl, I know what you mean. What? We got to stop it. Y'all know, even I told me, me marriage couple, baby, go to your mama, go, go to mom, be opening your mouth. No, you can't do that even to your, you can't slander your husband to your mom. You can't, you can't begin to tell, even you, you cannot begin to uncover somebody. But y'all been listen, people be married, if they will uncover you, people, you better going to be praying. Y'all better be praying, Lord, help my wife stop uncovering me. Help my husband stop uncovering me. Let me tell you how serious this is. Do you know that Noah had a son that uncovered him? And God cursed his whole generation? See, when you uncover someone, you're not trusting God to, to heal them. And usually, this, we're going to go on, but I want you to get this. Usually the situation that God used to prick you was actually to show you you. Your ability to feel like you got to get even. Your lack of ability to forgive. Because I'm going to tell you something. Man, and people, men and women, we have to be sensitive as friends. Because some people are so wounded that even the smallest things always, you'd be like, why is this person always offended on everything? You can't do, it's like you got to walk on shells around that person. That person is unhealed. I don't care how much somebody they love God. I don't care where they at. They got some. If you got, if they're offended by everything you do, you can't, some things, come on, when you get healed, some things you could just let ride. God, I, this, come on, it's not really that serious. God is not there. But everything got to be a debate. Everything you got to hear how I feel. Every, what, baby, this is what you do to them. This is what you do to that person. Your friend or whatever. Just sit them down and say, baby, where's your wound? Where's your real problem? Where's your real problem? That you feel like you have to be angry all the time. You left the toothpaste off the tank. You left a sock. You left a sock in the dryer. You ain't called my name right when you called me. Oh, God, help me. You know what I'm saying? Next time you, you call my name, you left out the, you left out the eye. Baby, we, what's wrong, baby? Where you sick at? Where we, what's the problem? No, seriously. Something, love covers some, am I right or wrong? Love got to cover some things, man. Amen? Okay, okay. Y'all looking at me like, y'all looking at me like you want me to just go on past that section. So I'm going to just go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now we will apply that from scripture. Mm-hmm. Many passages establish the principle that there is direct connection between the heart and the mouth. Jesus states in Matthew chapter 12, verse 33 through 37, either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree rotten and its fruit rotten, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, he's speaking to the religious leaders of his time. How can you, being evil, speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. The good man out of his good treasures bring forth what is good. 
and the evil man out of his evil treasure brings forth what is evil. And I say to you that every careless word that men shall speak, they shall render account for it in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Can we get an amen? Amen. A, a, let, me, let me ask you all a question. Where should your treasure be? He said your treasure should be those things where? Up above. Why did he, somebody tell me, why do you think that God said your treasure should be in those things up above? Somebody give me the revelation. Why do you think that? Why did he say that? Because watch this. He said, not what a thief can steal, mark a rust. Because if your treasure is not connected to God, you're going to be always bothered. If your heart is not in those things which are above, you can always be affected. If your, if your treasure is in something that can mold, that can rust, that the thief can steal, your mood can be changed. Am I right or wrong? Soon, if your treasure is something that can rust, you can be shifted. But if your treasure is in that thing which is up and above, the word, what is up above? The word, which is good and everlasting. When storms come, you're standing on something that cannot be moved. He said where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Some of us need to check where our treasure is. Treasure means the thing that you value. When people play with what you value, if what you value is something that can be stolen, rust, or be taken away, it can bring a response out of your heart that can be... How many get what I'm saying? If, what I, if my treasure is something, if my treasure is in my car, how many of know people treasure is in their car? Man, you mess around and touch that car, what come out of their heart? If you don't get your blank, blank, what you, what you doing in my car? Oh, no. Girl, I know you ain't getting your nasty stuff in my car like that. Where your treasure is begins to reveal the condition of your heart. I want y'all to hear what I'm saying. Your treasure begins to reveal what you value. And your mouth will defend what you value. How many of us, anybody understand what I'm saying? See, God already knows what you value by how you defend it. He knows your idol. Because you, and he knows, that, watch this. And if your idol, I want us to get this. If your idol is not above, it's what a, I want, you want me to get this. If my idol is not above, meaning in Christ. So where my idol is, it has not the power to change my heart. Some of y'all are going to get this. If my idol is my wife, she has not the power to change my heart. So guess what? When you try my wife, because my heart has not been changed, I'm going to curse you out. Why? Because she don't have the power to change my heart. When he says, let your treasure be in those things which are above, it is the thing that above that has the power to change your heart. If your idol is in anything other than what's above, when... Somebody challenges your idol, you respond in anger and bitterness. Why? Because what your idol does not have power to change your heart. Anybody get what I'm saying? So he says, let your heart be in those things which are above that. Why? When you get challenged, you respond co according to where your heart connected to. So when somebody tried me because my heart is here, I can't, I have to respond in love. Which in my flesh, letting you know that this flesh got its own nature. Can I get an amen? Because in my flesh, don't get me wrong, I want to curse you out. But because my heart is connected, the heart is symbolic of life. Everybody understand? My life is connected to that thing which is above and I've been eating it. So though my flesh feel one thing, I respond in my spirit. Everybody get it? We better get this. Because watch this. Sometimes what you're talking to, sometimes how you talk reveals the idol in your heart. That's why you and I cannot place anything above God because it's us in God that handles everything else. Because people are not perfect. 
You're not perfect. Amen? I'm not perfect. We follow a perfect God, and guess what he's doing to us? He's perfecting us. That word perfection, mean, per, that word perfected in, that, in Hebrew means made mature. He's maturing you, making you whole. And who? In the one you connected to above, Christ. Why? So you can respond correctly to get what? A prosperous outcome. When you and I respond according to the word, even though people might say you a sucker, you look like, but watch this, because you responded correctly, you're going to get a prosperous outcome. Amen? We got it? Okay, go ahead. Jesus here establishes the direct connection between the mouth and the heart using parabolic language. He refers to the heart as a tree and to the words that come out of the mouth as a fruit. And the kind of words that come out of your mouth will indicate the condition of your heart. He says, for instance, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart heart brings forth good words and an evil man out of the evil treasure in his heart brings forth evil words you will notice jesus used the word good three times and he uses the word evil three times if the heart is good then out of the mouth will come words that are good but if the heart is evil then out of the mouth will come words that are evil in matthew chapter 7 verse 17 and 18 Jesus expresses in similar language, every good tree bears good fruit, but the rotten tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a rotten tree produce good fruit. The nature of the tree inevitably determines the kind of fruit. Conversely, when we see the kind of fruit, we know the nature of the tree. The tree is the heart and the fruit is the mouth. If the heart is good, the words that come from the mouth will be good. But if the words that come out from the mouth are evil, we know that the heart is evil. You cannot have bad fruit from a good tree, nor can you have good fruit from a bad tree. There is an absolute, inescapable connection <coughs> between the state of the heart and the state of the mouth. We may deceive ourselves about the state of our hearts with all sorts of ideas about our own goodness, purity, or righteousness, but the sure and unfailing indicator is what comes out of our mouths. If that which comes out of our mouths is corrupt, then our hearts are corrupt. There can be no other conclusion. Listen up. Um, anybody, is there anybody getting a deeper uh, level of revelation? I mean, on, on, on understanding discernment. Getting a deeper um, level of revelation on discernment. That's why some of us, when we meet people, and if, if even in relationships, you might want to kind of be a little quiet. You might want to listen very clear. Because you won't be deceived about, if you understand that, uh, uh, in other words, I don't care if you plant oranges, you are insane sitting there saying you're waiting for apples. There's just something wrong with you. You're like, these, <laughs> these apples are going to be good. What did I plant? Oranges? In Genesis, he said, let every seed bring after its own kind. Christ is the seed of Abraham. He said, he told Abraham, he said, Abraham, in thy seed, many nations shall be blessed. He is the seed. Everybody understand? He is the word. So when we receive Christ, the engrafted word inside of us of Christ, the word of God, how can we spew out salt water and fresh water at the same time? Amen? Now watch this. Can we see things come out and we be like, God, your conscience is like, God, this ain't you. Yeah. Come on, don't act like you ain't never been, you, you don't got angry and said something, but your conscience, you begin, but the conscience of God said, you know what, I knew I shouldn't have said it that way. Am I right or wrong? Or I knew. Remember now, God speaks a lot about exercising something, practicing something. When you begin to do this, your heart is being transformed into the heart of God. And when your heart is being transformed to the heart of God, sometimes you can see your heart begin, but watch this, this is how you know you're growing. 
when you can see your own heart. That's why he, I don't know if you noticed, that's why he said up here, we may deceive ourselves about the state of our hearts with all sorts of ideas about, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm good, I'm, I'm, a good I'm, I'm a good person. No, I see my heart. God is good in me. And the good I speak and the good I do is the glory of God. I said, oh, wretched man that I am. Peter said, amen? Does anyone else want to comment on that? See, on Sun I want to get this. I want to remember this. On Sunday, Paul said he loved the decrees of God. We found out in 1 John, in the fifth chapter, it is not grievance to those who love God when it comes to the brethren to do what God says do. When it is grievance to you, that's because there's an issue in your heart that God needs to correct. Because watch this, whatever God commands or tells you to do, it is the better, it's for the betterment of you or somebody else. God will never tell you to do something if it's not the betterment for somebody. And when you understand that God is out of the very essence of love, you will crush you and not allow it to become grievance to you because you understand God knows what's better. Anybody understand what I'm saying? God knows what's best. But sometimes we have a fight about that because in our flesh we know we want something. Anybody been there? And you get angry and you get bitter and, you, and in your heart you're going to try to act like you're not angry and bitter. You're going to try to act like you're cool, with, you're cool with it. When the reality, the only reason you're angry and bitter and God, and, when, and, and God, watch this, and God created the situation to show you how you would respond how much you ain't really in on him like you thought you really was, how much you ain't really, because as soon as he says something you don't like, now your heart begins to show it is grievance to do the things of God. Because remember now in John, in John, in 1 John, in the fifth chapter, he said if we love God, we will love his children. So anything that God tell you concerning his children, it's good for God. Amen? It might not be good for you because you might not get what you want, but it's good for God. Amen. And I'm saying this, God does this to everybody in this room. How many of us in this room are desiring to become greater? Then get ready for him. How many of us in this room that knows that greater always usher in change? Then get ready for it. Get ready for God to, get ready for God to hit you straight in your face and show you where you at. Why? Because it's time for your change. Peter said, God, I'll never deny you. God, I will never deny you. Anybody been finding yourself in that situation? God, I love you with all my heart. God, you my everything. God said you do. God doesn't show us, us because he's sitting at the mouth, let me just make you look coolish. He shows us that we may understand that your words are not lining up with your heart yet. Yeah, you saying it with your mouth. But your heart ain't there yet. And I'm going to take your heart to where your words are. That you won't be a hypocrite. So, so, so Abraham, take Isaac up to the mountain. And put him to death. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. Because what did he say after Abraham took him? He said, now I know that your heart lines up with your words. Put the death the thing you want. Because you know I know what's best. Amen? Anybody have a comment? This is so good. Nobody really have a comment? Okay, look. go ahead. Hold up. Give it to the young man. He has a comment. I want to. You know what's funny? Why he getting that? Some of us. Let me, let me, this, let me tell you. This, this is going to be your comment. This is my comment too. My pastor used to say, if you can't say amen, say what? Ouch. Everybody just say ouch. 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 
Go ahead. Um, what I got from it is like, um, cause like a few days ago, God showed me something, but mm -hmm. I didn't really like understand it. Mm -hmm. And it's funny how I come here today, and then I'm hearing it, and it's talking about the fruits and stuff like that. So, the um, the word says, you know, you will know it's fruit by the tree, right? Mm -hmm. So now what God showed me is like He showed me two avocados, one good avocado and one rotten avocado, but the rotten avocado, remember, it's a seed that's inside of that rotten avocado. Mm -hmm. So now, when God takes that rotten avocado and takes the flesh out and leaves that seed, cleans it up, he'll plant that seed back up again. And now, when he plants that seed, which, which is us moving in the spirit now, he plants that seed, he waters it, and when it comes out of the dirt, it's a plant. But as the spirit continues to grow, it becomes a tree. So now with that avocado, which was rotten, starting to um, have the Spirit of God, and it's growing in the Spirit of God, now it becomes a tree. So when the tree starts um, branching out, it bears good fruit. Now it brings back good avocados. You get what I'm saying? So Amen. guess what I got from it is like how God can take a bad seed, clean it up with the Spirit, and send it out there. And now that's, how I, that's what I got when it says you would know the tree by its fruit. That's what I got. Amen. 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 Anyone else? All right, we'll keep on going then. Let's keep on going. I did educational work for five years in East Africa. One of the tribes I worked with was the Marigali tribe. I was amazed to discover that the same word in that language meant heart and voice. I used to wonder how to determine which one the person meant. Does he mean your heart or your voice? But as, I, but as I pondered it, I began to see the real insight in the use of that particular language. In reality, the voice indicates the heart. The voice tells with words what is the condition of the heart. This is the same as Jesus said, you cannot have bad words out of a good heart and you cannot have good words out of a bad heart. When we come to God with an estimate of our own spiritual condition, I think God is prone to respond the same way that the doctor did with the dysentery patients in the desert. You might say, God, I am a very good Christian. I really love you, and I go to church. But God says, show me your tongue. When I've seen your tongue, I'll know the real condition of your heart. I want to illustrate this by taking two prophetic pictures from the Old Testament. The first is of Christ himself, the Messiah, and the second one is of the bride of Christ, the church. <coughs> Notice in each case, the feature which is emphasized first and foremost is the condition of the lips and the mouth. Psalm chapter 45, verse 1 and 2 gives us a beautiful prophetic picture of the Messiah. My heart overflows with a good theme. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And then these are the words that the writer addresses to the king, to the Messiah. Thou art fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon thy lips. Therefore, God has blessed thee forever. Here is a picture of the Messiah and his grace, his beauty and his mortal purity. What is the first aspect of that beauty which is manifested? His lips. Grace, it says, is poured upon thy lips. Then it says, therefore, God has blessed thee forever. The very important principles are given here. First, the grace of the Messiah is manifested primarily in his lips. Second, God has blessed him forever because of the grace of his lips. When Jesus appeared in human form and men were sent to arrest him, they came back without him and were asked, why didn't you bring him in? Their answer was, no one ever spoke the way this man does. John chapter 7, verse 45 and 46. The grace that poured from his lips marked him out as the Messiah. 
In the Song of Solomon, there is a prophetic picture of Christ and his bride and the relationship between them. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 3, is addressed to the bride. Your lips are like a scarlet thread, and your mouth is lovely. Your temples are like a slice of a pomegranate behind your veil. The first feature mentioned about the bride is her lips. Your lips are like a scarlet thread, and your mouth is lovely. The word scarlet there indicates sanctification through the blood of Jesus. The lips have been touched by the blood. As a result, the mouth is lovely. Notice that the face is hidden behind a veil. Your temples are like a slice of pomegranate, but they are behind a veil. Still, the voice is heard through the veil. The other beauties are veiled, but the beauty of the voice comes out through the veil. The voice is the thing most manifested. In the same chapter of Songs of Solomon, we read, Your lips, my bride, drip honey. Honey and milk are under your tongue, and the fragrance of your garments is like the fragrance of Lebanon. Songs of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 11. Notice the two distinctive words used of the tongue of the bride, honey and milk. There are also the two distinctive features of the promised land. The beauty of the promised land is seen in the bride, and especially in her tongue and in her lips. There is a fragrance associated with these beautiful lips that penetrates the veil. Again, the clear form of the bride is not seen behind the veil, but her voice and the fragrance penetrates the veil due to the beauty of her lips. Her lips are like a thread of scarlet, and her mouth is lovely. Is that the true of you and me as followers of Jesus? We need to ask ourselves that question. Amen. How many of us know that um, when it came to the spies, 12 spies that went over to the promised land, that 10 came back and their report was, out of their mouth they reported, but we are but grasshoppers in our own eyes. Their lips spoke words contrary. And Jesus, and, and, and the scripture says, um, they had the wrong spirit. But Caleb and Joshua had the right spirit. The spirit of the, but with John 67 says, my words are spirit and life. To speak in a way that's fragrance to God, that is sweet and loving, is to speak in faith. It's to speak according to the word of God. Um, we found out on Sunday, or Sunday before, that David loved God's precepts, his general rules that changed his behavior and his, uh, uh, changed his behavior and his thinking process. The whole songs of 119 are David loving the laws and the precepts and the statutes of God. It's like he having a love fest with God's mouth saying that, God, your words are good. They are like honey to my lips. When we understand that Jesus Christ being the word wrapped up in flesh, and when we receive the Holy Spirit is to bring all things to the word of God, when we get, I, I, I see where God is taking us. He's desiring to take us to a place where the word of God is sweet to us. When God tell us yes or tell us no, when God tell, that the word of God is so sweet, it's stronger than our will for ourselves. We love his word. We adore. We are adore. We, we love that he, what he says is good. And when somebody, it's like, you know, it's kind of funny that I used to use this as, a, as an example a long time ago. Let's say your wife is in the kitchen and you're sitting out there with your homeboys and your wife cooking and she in the kitchen. And I used to use it this way. And I want to just kind of illustrate it. And you talk and, and she come to the door. And she hear you saying, boy, my baby in there, she be throwing up. Man, that woman's so special, man. She is, oh, man, I just crazy. And she see you boasting about her to your homeboy. She don't know, he don't know she at the door. He just tell her, man, that girl in there, man, I just love her. Why she on the other side of the door, her word, he don't, he, uh, oh, she doesn't see him, but she hears his voice. And the words that he speak begins to grasp her heart that when she walks out there, 
She like, baby, you want some water too? Can I do this? She begins to, come on now, y'all know what I'm talking about. Why? Because her words captured his heart to the place where it caused him to, where it caused her to not want to serve, to go to an extreme to the point because her words were, his, his words were life to her. God says, how, when you read the word of God, he says, let the words, when you hear a song, have you ever heard a song of God, a true worshiper sing unto God? I'm not talking about a true worshiper that's trying to show off their voice. I'm talking about a true worshiper that sings to God to the place that you be like, man, she ain't a love thing. Yes, man. He in a love this. What did they encounter about God that that was that, that they, they sing songs, the kind of songs they sing? And God says, but it shouldn't be just a singer. Anyone that's sitting in the atmosphere of my word. Come on. Do you not hear when I was on the cross and nails was in my hand and thorns on my back? And did you not hear me when I said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do? How sweet was that to your soul? For you to hear, forgive them. Forgive them. God says, see, we need to be having a love. Some of us, we, we, I don't know how we, where we become so grievous to us. How we become those who serve God, who come to church, but we're no longer, our heart is no longer open to hear from God anymore. His word is no longer income. His word is no longer something we want to hear for directions no more or guidance. How we become bastards. You say, why would I say that? Because in the scripture it says a bastard cannot receive chastening. He is one that no longer desires to hear what his father has to say anymore. As, but it's only one problem. It's because he doesn't understand that the good, the prodigal son didn't understand that the, that, that the father's words are not to bring destruction to you, but to bring you to life and life more abundantly. If God says no, if he say not now, if he say don't go, if he say go, those words come from my heart that desires Jeremiah 29, 11. Those words come from my heart that says his thoughts are not evil of you, but to give you hope in a future. Some of us, we got this God that if he, you want God to say yes to everything you want. You don't got that prostitute gospel. That you think God your sugar daddy and anything you come at him with, he's supposed to say, let me tell you something. A beautiful voice is to tell your child no. Especially, that child don't understand why you're saying no when they, when they want to go into that candy store and devour that candy. But you understand it's going to affect their teeth, diabetes, their weight. They don't understand behind the picture of your no. But love will let them be mad and stand on the truth because you know what's better for them. And I believe God is trying to tell us that the healing of our tongue has to come from us being able to take a no. The healing of our tongue, it has to come. The healing of your tongue has to be a heart transformed where God's word is what? Wonderful to you and not something. See, the thing about it, we're at a time now where we want to only use God's word as a means for what we want. No. His word is good even if he don't give you what you want. If God won't give you that job, $60,000 a year, he is still good. And his words to tell you, I'm not giving it to you, are good. And should be sweet to the hearer who understands he knows what's best who knows, should be sweet to the hearer, who knows that his interests for you are life and life more abundantly. Amen. D, anybody have anything they want to 
Because, you know, I know that we're real quiet on this section right here, too. But to me, it's one of the most powerful. It's like number two. It's so powerful. You know why it's powerful? Because it's going, because it's, discern, it's, it's a session that says, you know what? You and me, you can't fool God. He's not looking with you. He sees when we say, I'm cool. God says, I would rather for you to say, you're not cool. And say, it's better for you to say, God, I'm not cool, but I need you to help me to get to be cool with what you're saying. God is saying, let us stop. Come on. Y'all know, know what the world always says. Like, I'm just being real. The world ideal of being real, it ain't full of nothing but lies. Cursing you out is not just being real. That's not being real. That's, that's, that's lying. That's a bitter, and unclean, and defiled heart. Being real is, I feel this in my heart, but this ain't right. It ain't, it's not right. And know what I need to do? I need to do Corinthians. I need to capture that thought by the word of God and say, I'm not going to say that. The battle going to take place. Everybody say, put your hand up. It's going to take place here. In the heart. And I know some of y'all think the heart is here. Because of poetry and people write songs. We say in our program, I love you with all my heart. And we say this in our program. When people talk about, I love. And then when people get in a bad relationship, they start grabbing their heart. When, they, when the guy break up with them, they break up, they be grabbing their heart. And they be acting like they dying here. Call a doctor because either they have gas. We say that those, either they have gas or they have a heart attack. Because you don't feel pain here. When you're going through a relationship or break up anger, you actually feel it here. But that's what I'm talking about. She did the program, but it looked crazy going to somebody and saying, I love you with all my heart. You know? I love you with my heart here. But the reason they use the word heart here, because this is symbolic of the center of life. But the pain in you hurt to guard your heart is to guard up here. And that's why, watch this. Well, yeah, it's going to make sense to you now. He says, I hide the word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Why? Because your word tells me how to operate correctly in a manner to please you. Because without faith, it's impossible to please you. So therefore, faith come by. And I hide the word where? So I can move in faith with you and not in my flesh. Let me tell y'all something. You're going to get mad at your pastors. Pastors going to get mad at the congregation. You're going to get mad at your wives. You're going to get mad at your husband. You know why? Because no matter who God you, we are, we are in this flesh. But no matter who you get mad at with or whatever, you cannot move outside of the spirit to get life in that situation. In the word of God, it tells you how to deal with your pastor if you upset with that. In the word of God, it tells the pastor how to, in the word of God, it tells how, it tells parents how to deal with their children. In the word of God, it tells children how to deal with their parents. In the word of God, it tells you how to deal with authority. Sometimes situations are arised up for God to show that our heart needs to be changed. It's not for condemnation. God has to show us that we have some issues in our heart. Amen? And he's talking about, and this brother go in. And tonight, God.
God is saying to you and me and some of us in this room, open your mouth, hey, ah, you got some problems. You got some problems in your spirit. But how many of y'all glad that there's a bomb in Gilead? There's a healer. And watch this. In religion, religion can do everything but heal the heart. Religion don't even want to deal with the heart. It want to deal with the gifts. It want to deal with knowledge. But it does not want to deal with the heart. That's why you got people who can tell you everything in the Bible. But when you hear them speak, how they talk to their wife, whatever, they're like, man, what's wrong with that person's heart? You got people who can sing and dance and go off. And listen, now this is the part we like to do. I want to say this, and watch this. This is what we like to do. We like to see other people's condition and then judge. Why do we do that? Not knowing when you begin to judge is a reflection of your heart. God is looking for some, God is about to raise up you all as sons and daughters. There is a righteous judgment. But that righteous judgment ushers you into praying and fasting for that person crying out to God for that person and believing that God has the ability to change. See, when you don't really believe God has the ability to change, that's why you don't pray. That's why you judge, because you think they stuck. Like the young brother said, you think that, you think, we think that avocado is stuck. We don't just realize God just want to peel off the flesh and put the right seed. Amen. It's time for change. And guess what? How many of y'all was here when I preached that message that we have to have, that everybody, that we have to have a, uh, a focal point? Anybody remember that message? In other words, you have to have a focal point to change. Jesus Christ is our focal point. Your intellect is not your focal point. Your past is not your focal point. To walk in true excellence in the spirit of God is to walk in Christ, the word of God. Wives will stop condemning husbands. Husbands will stop condemning wives. Mothers will stop condemning daughters. Daughters will stop being rebellious against mothers when they understand my real problem is that I have a heart issue. It's not that it's my mom. It's not my mom. Man, she get on my, no, it ain't your mom. You got a heart issue. You don't like to take authority. You don't like to listen. There's something wrong with your heart. And, and then you got the moms. You got the dads cursing the sons out. Mom, cur dad cursing the son out. Don't get mad at dad. He has a heart issue. And when you can discern correctly, you can pray correctly. Because this is what we say. He just nasty. They just rude. They just arrogant. But he just told us, say, ah. When they said, ah, what came out described the condition of their heart. Aren't you glad you know a surgeon, a heart surgeon, that can take the word without killing them and be able to cut away that cancer in their heart? No one have, what do y'all think? All is good? Because we were real quiet tonight. Go ahead, Emily. I thought about when the doctor said um, for them to take, for the patient to take their tongue out, it reminds me of gestures. And um, often, you know, you see a kid sticking their tongue out, making a gesture, and it just showed me, like, a lot of times we, our heart and our words can also be evil and good 
based on our gestures. We don't necessarily always have to say something. Mm -hmm. It can just be a gesture that we can do that shows the, also the condition of our heart. And um, <clears throat> it can be uh, even, even when it said, hold on, even when it said, it's, it said under her veil, not only did you, you, you hear her voice, but you also, there was a fragrance also that was revealed. And even when I thought about the word fragrance, I thought about aroma and even when you, when you think about um, our aroma or our presence as believers, that can also be something that people can look at. And often I've experienced times where you may not have to say something, oh, I'm a Christian or I'm a believer or whatever. It can be j just by your gestures or by your actions that somebody can see that the goodness out of your heart. You know, it doesn't always, you don't always have to speak in a sense of somebody seeing the goodness of your heart. And then when it comes to the bad part, you don't always, you, you don't have to just, you know, splur out wicked or evil things. It can be just by your gestures that somebody can get the condition of your heart as well. Amen. Amen. I was, um, it was so funny, we was at work today, and I was telling Barbara about, I said, them kids can be going off and April will just but maintain the same love. I like how she be, she be like, hey, she be like, I'm like she she correct them, but then she be like, same love, okay, babies. And and I be like, no, I love her personality in that situation because see, I be wanting to knock one of them. No, I'm just joking. I'm just I'm just I'm just joking. I'm gonna stay safe. You know what I'm saying? But the thing about it is, no, because God. What, listen, I want us to get this. God is working on his children's heart. I know y'all hearing prophets talking about God getting ready to release the wealth. All oh, that's foolishness. Oh, let me send it for a year. Next, this year, oh, here come the wealth. All that. God is a God that's going to be looking at the heart of his people. And therefore, he's saying to us, you need work on your heart. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. And some of us, the way we think, God says, I'm about to do something. The Bible says, present your body as a living what? Holy and what? As your what? Let your mind what? Oh, y'all don't, oh, don't know the second part? Let your mind what? Let your mind, not be, let your mind be what? God says, I don't want your mind conformed to this world. But be what? By the what? Of your mind. He said, I got to change your heart. And to change it, how many of y'all know this? If I took an eighth-month-old baby, black baby, put it in a Spanish household, and it grew, it's put, it in, put it in a Spanish household, and it grew to be 16 years old, what language is it going to speak? S Spanish. What kind of swag is it going to have? Spanish. Why? Why? Because now does some of us understand when God says, do not forsake the assembly of the brethren as you see the days approach? Now you understand why he says that? Because the atmosphere that you're in is going to strengthen what you're becoming. For all you think that church is like, it's like, no, you forgot what you was coming to church. The church is an atmosphere where the word of God is being preached. It's not a social gathering. It's not a date club. Let me say that again. It's not a date club. It's not where you get your hook up, though God can add on. Y'all like that? You know what I mean? It's not where you get your hook up, but God can add on. Y'all like that? Oh, all right. Uh, okay, uh, okay. I thought it was kind of cool. I thought it was kind of cool. Y'all, no, y'all hate it, so I'm gonna leave up on y'all anyway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and 
It ain't you sitting to scoping somebody out trying to fulfill the desires of your flesh. It's the atmosphere of the word of God that begins to transform the heart. So what? It can produce a different behavior that you can walk and have life and life more abundantly. Amen? That's why all I, that's why all I can, man, preach Christ Jesus. Preach Christ. I don't, this pope, my, this pope it will never be used to preach no political views because the bottom line is in the political industry is all crazy. Let your heart, let God get your heart right in you and let him lead you. It's not behind this pulpit, it's not to preach black, white, red, or yellow. It's all dirt. Because you black, you get no favors with God. And because you white, you get no flavors with God. God has no respect of person. Let's stop tripping with the word. It's your heart. Amen? Are we good tonight? I hope some of us, how many of us are going to go home and read chapter 2 over again? Some of y'all like, I ain't reading that no more. <laughs> I'm through with that one. <laughs> I'm not going to read that again. <laughs> um, let's bow our head. Father God, we thank you tonight. God, I'm first partaker of your word. And Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in the midst of us, in the midst of you tonight, God, that you will help us. God, we know that your word is true. And God, your word, <laughs> it peeked into areas of our heart tonight. And sometimes, some of us, it made us uncomfortable. Because some of us want to hold on to the anger. Some of us want to hold on to the unforgiveness. But God, I thank you that you won't let us hold on to it because you love us too much. You won't let us hold on to the bitterness that we feel about our father because he was not there. You will not let us hold on to the unforgiveness that we feel about with our friend because she did us wrong. God, you will not let us hold on to the bitterness when it comes to our husbands or our wives or our sisters or our brothers. God, we, want, we desire, we ask you tonight, God, circumcise our heart. Peel away this, because God, I'm, Bottom line, I'm, I'm tired of hiding the things that I know you already know. God, I want to forgive. And I need, and the truth be told, God, I can't do it without you. I don't want to be right. I want to be lined up. So, God, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for the man of God who you gave this revelation to to help us. That you will heal. God, we don't, we're, we, you're, we're here tonight because we need you to heal our tongue. We're not thinking about the other person. Because we like to point out things and say, God, this, oh, this person needs to be here to hear this. This person needs to hear No, God, I'm glad I'm here to hear this. I'm glad that you are talking to me. Because my tongue needs to be healed. Because my heart has been wounded. My heart has been broken. And God, I've been living with this for some years. But I hear your word tonight, God, and I say ah to you. Because I don't want to be a person that speaks blessings and curses at the same time. When I get angry, God, I speak like I should not speak. And I know you hear me, but I come tonight and I ask you to forgive me. And I know you forgive me, God. And I pray that you will heal the breach. And I will leak no more bitterness. I will leak no more unforgiveness. And like the woman of God said tonight, God, Lord, help me watch my gestures. Because, God, I got an issue with rolling my eyes. I got to look that people know I'm cursing them out. God, I pray that the seed of Christ will blossom in us. 
and the glory of God will be manifested through us. God, I have faith and believe that you hear us tonight. And not one soul in this room, not one soul in this room will remain the same. That this word that you talked about tonight, that's why you gave us the word in the book, you gave every soul a, that it will change. And our relationships will change because our hearts are changing. God, I'm so glad I can't be fake around you. I'm so glad I don't have to be fake around you because I know you love me. We thank you tonight. In your son's name we pray. And may every soul in this room be continuously and always blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, do we have any first-time visitors? Just want to make sure we have any first-time visitors. Any first-time visitors? Come see me for a minute. Come say hello to me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen.